Hello beautiful co-creators of the new paradigm. I'm Vitika Kohlhoff of Design for Awareness and I'm here with Gabe Salomon. Hi. <laughs> Hi Gabe, thank you for being here. Hi. Thank you for having me. Uh, and Gabe and me, we decided to uh, make some videos together and this is the first one. And we thought because we both have quite a history in the arts, um, to make this video about the arts and how they hey. help us bring the, well, let's say the, um, the higher dimensional energies down to earth. And that's really what it comes down to. So Gabe, <laughs> would you like to share uh, your journey that is mainly focused or has been focused on music, right? Mm. How, how did that yeah, affect so my... you? Absolutely. I would love to share. So my journey has been primarily rooted in music mm -hmm. and the my real musical journey though i've been a musician for my whole life it really began when i was around 17 years old and i went to the first year of university and i was studying at a music conservatory in boston and i was coming out of a, a, a quite a challenging time in my life going mm -hmm. through a lot of substance abuse things and mm -hmm. a lot of depression and and so music was very much the thing that brought me a sense of salvation. And I was noticing that as I was opening up more to my own creative flow and really diving deep into my, my passion that it came in tandem with having a lot of spiritual awakenings because I felt that as I was diving deeper into my own creative expression, it was opening up that avenue to have more spiritual understanding and so that's when i began to remember some of my contact experiences and i really began to open up to higher dimensional information and beyond that i was sort of disillusioned with a lot of what was going on in the world and as i was having these awakening experiences i actually dropped out of school because it was it was too much. I didn't know how to integrate being in society and while simultaneously waking up from the societal construct. Right. So I was having a really hard time at that phase in my life. And that was when I was, you know, 18, 19 years old. Mm -hmm. And um, so in this process of, of learning how to be more integrated in the higher dimensions and then bring that down to earth, I, I actually stepped away from my music for a while. I was I was not only going to school, but I was in a band and we were assigned to a, a major label and I was doing that and that was sort of the crux of my life at that mm -hmm. point. And at that at that point, as I was going through these different experiences, I actually moved to Sedona and I moved in with Bridget and Kirk. And of course the people that would be watching this video most likely know who Bridget and Kirk yes, are. And I live with them. <laughs> otherwise we put some links below. Yes, yes, yes. absolutely. And um <laughs> So we were living with one another and we were living in a community in Sedona and we were creating all sorts of things. And a buddy of mine, his name is Nash. And for those that might know my videos, you've seen him. He's my kind of co-creator in a lot of my projects and stuff. He, he also moved down to Sedona with us. And at that point, we were integrating a lot of stuff. We were exploring the idea of community and we started to return to incorporating music back into our lives again in in a more tangible way and as soon as we did that it was it was as if sedona no longer needed us to be there okay and we ended up moving back to the east coast where we settled in the berkshires which is in massachusetts and it's a mountain range and so we we were living with one another and we still live very close with one another. And, and actually now I live in a community of other star seeds and other beings that are very connected to this stuff. Right. But we, we created a, an organization called musical coordination. And basically the premise is that we gather people from all walks of life to come together, to creatively express ourselves through music mm -hmm. as a way of transforming our consciousness and connecting to our divine nature and so that's sort of the the summary of my musical journey up until that point i also do produce a lot of electronic music and do sa uh, sound design and music for film and stuff uh -huh. like that but everything that i use with music is absolutely with the intention of transformation and 
to provide a transmission of higher consciousness. Wow, I love that. That's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Yeah. And I really do oh, of feel, course. Thanks oh for man, uh, music is such a strong uh, medium to go, mm. to use as a tool, of course, if you resonate with it, uh, to go mm -hmm. within, to use it for meditation yes. or travel. You can, you can, do you, do you work um, with, for instance, um, that whole idea of binaural beats? Do you, do you play oh, with yeah, that? Oh yeah, totally. Okay. Totally. I, I create a lot of synthesized sounds, and um, in the in my process of of creating these synthesized synthesized sounds from scratch, I I do it in such a way. And and for those that watch my videos, you see a lot of the animations that I have in my videos, and the sound design that's in there is created by me. And and it's for the purpose of utilizing certain frequencies to align the two hemispheres of your brain. Exactly. So. Yeah. I'm very much into that. And during the workshops, we also bring a lot of um, these different synthesized vibrations using keyboards. And also we play with singing bowls and didgeridoos and other instruments to align your frequency. Yeah. Wow. Mm. I love that. I, I really, I had personally, I don't know about you, but maybe you can share as well. I had a lot yeah. of downloads that were musical. Uh, there, there, yes. was, there was audio in my uh, lucid dreams. And yes. I feel that... Um, the multidimensional beings that we both work with uh, very much mm. speak often in music and it's a stronger language in a sense than yes. um, vocal wor like words i mean yes um and one tone can can just envelop such a such a load of oh, information yeah. and mm. they showed me how with sounds they actually so is that showing showing or letting you hear <laughs> yeah <laughs> they're letting you hear like how how everything in the universe is a tone has has its own frequency and mm. with images it would be combined so mm. i can be mesmerized by a good video clip you know when the images and the oh, sound yeah. come together well or to see a dancer um embody mm. the music and it's all mm. so amazing to see what we can do in the arts with yes. that that and other mediums so have you mm. had downloads that that um do you remember one for instance absolutely absolutely well generally a lot of the experiences that i have with these higher dimensional beings especially when i'm waking up on board ships and, and like as you said having these lucid experiences yeah. when i'm in these these environments that are created by these ships yeah the beings that i'm, I'm working with in the environment are are quite literally communicating through these very strange very abstract frequencies uh -huh. and somehow those frequencies are acting as carrier waves to sort of transmit the multi-dimensionality of whatever they want to convey and so a lot of the music that i make whether it's my personal music or i'm doing sound design for the videos and stuff it's all to emulate a lot of the frequencies and a lot of the the sounds that I'm actually hearing on on board these ships and that are being downloaded to me during these experiences. Uh -huh. And because music and art is such a transparent reflection of conveying the multidimensionality of existence, you're able to transmit a concept that goes far beyond linear understanding and thinking of the yeah. human mind. Yes. Um, so an, an interesting download that I have received, I mean, there's so many, but for example, um, f for some, somehow the sun correlates to a major key. So in music, you have a major key and you have a minor key. Mm -hmm. And somehow the, the intervallic relationship of a major scale correlates to the very functionality of our sun. This was mm -hmm. something that I was shown this is something that I was downloaded with. And a minor key correlates more so to the celestial rotation of the moon and the way in which that functions. Yes. And when I receive these things, I get, you know, for those of you that get these downloads and have these experiences, you sort of get a taste of it mm -hmm. and you integrate it and you convey it in your own way. But you're always sort of left with that notion of like, if we knew how to utilize this for scientific and technological <sighs> discoveries and research, there we would be so advanced right now. So anyway, yeah, don't get <laughs> so if anyone has, that one, yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, you know, I, I don't claim to be a scientist. I don't really claim to have 
a huge understanding of a lot of these more scientific downloads that I get, but I do see them, I do receive them, I do understand them in my own way, and I do my best to convey the message in an artistic way. I feel yes. that if I were to work with like someone who's a scientist or an engineer and I was able to give them a lot of the information that I've received, we could create some crazy technological sustainable devices with it. Yes. But we'll see if that happens. And, and It'd be a really lot cool. of those already exist, but they just haven't like, yes. haven't just like re reached the masses yet. Uh, I remember exactly. yeah. reading in a newspaper when I was still doing that, like way back. <laughs> Uh, when I had to, I went to school with a little, tr little tr part of my trip was with a train uh, when I was in art school. Um, and uh -huh. I remember reading this article, they found a technique to uh, operate on people without using uh, knives or anything, uh, but using sound. Mm -hmm. And they would yeah. just um, put the body part in water so it's cooled down and then use a certain tone a frequency mm. to uh, entering for instance it's your hand <laughs> it would enter yeah. in one end of your hand and the other one and the like laser beams of sound would meet in the middle and they could mm. very exactly remove um mm. say um cells that are not growing uh, organized uh or tumor whatever they they were testing it on uh by having right. this sound frequencies like burst into each other and it would like cell per cell like you could be very specific uh like wow bust bust them or how do you say it? like they would just yeah <laughs> yeah uh, they would yeah they, they, would they would collapse spontaneously combust yes. <laughs> yeah collapse and, and okay the body, yeah the body would be able to blo the blood plasma would just take it away like like any other trash that's in the blood so you would yeah have no scars and it would be gone wow. so i read wow. that and i never heard about it again and it's just like tiny tiny article and i'm like whoa and you know what yeah it, it almost made me cry right and uh i remember i was really moved by that and um and then I, I felt like coming home, like, oh, finally, mm -hmm. finally, <laughs> you know, in this world where yeah. we are starting to figure out that you don't have to cut bodies open because you can right. just, you can just <laughs> <laughs> use these sound waves or whatever. It feels so much more yes. natural to me, at least to work in yes. that way. And uh, what you said about the sun, there is, there's so many um, people working with tuning forks and you can actually put them on yep. the body and it has an amazing effect. It's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had a tuning fork uh, massage in a sense? Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I have, I have tuning forks and I use them on myself yes. all the me time too, because it's too. just so wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. So there's so much to say about sound and, and um, I think for visuals as well. So I, I chose the art academy because for me, language wasn't, yeah. didn't seem to be the fastest way. Um, and my guides mm. were speaking to me in, in images. So it made so much sense. Yeah. Just we have this saying here. I don't know if you have it there as well. One image says more than a thousand words. Yes, absolutely. Right? Yeah. So I would mm -hmm. just like draw and paint and that would be my way of speaking because I kept a lot of mm -hmm. my contact experiences to myself as well. Uh, definitely yeah. in the beginning of my journey because I didn't know what it was, what was going on. Um, but you said before, just before we started doing this video, how mm -hmm. um, for you too, uh, working with the arts and following your heart, following your passion, how it mm -hmm. helped you center and also draw mm -hmm. in more information to understand more about your own spiritual beingness. So mm -hmm. maybe you can give a little bit of an example there and I would love to share about that too and we can exchange. Yes, yeah, I would love to talk about it. And there's also, I had something to ask you that was coming through as well. So I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll get into that after I answer your question. Great. So <laughs> I feel that for me, mm -hmm. I, throughout my whole life, I've always been tapping on tables. I've always been moving. I can't really sit still. I'm uh -huh. not the kind of person that sits still. Meditation has been great, like sitting in, in lotus position and being still. It's been a beneficial thing to have. But when I'm most tuned in is when I'm moving, when I'm creating, when I'm tapping. Like, if you know me in person, there isn't really, a, uh, there isn't a minute that goes by that, I'm not tapping a rhythm on something or singing something because the way in which I'm just grounding it in is all through the expression of music. Yeah. And I'm literally, I'm literally creating music a hundred percent of the time. 
And in order to even stay phased into this dimension, I need to bring that through in whatever way possible. Yeah. So if I don't have an instrument around me, I'll be whatever it is, tapping on my legs, doing something musical, composing in my head. And when I am creating, I'm in the flow of my creation, that's when I feel by far the most aligned to my higher self. And I'm able to bring through a clear vision. And mm -hmm. I think that at first, what ends up happening when you're you're first on your artistic journey, when you and also when you're first on your spiritual journey, it can feel somewhat hard to connect what you're envisioning, and then bring that into the manifest right. world. But as you become more clear and refined within your consciousness, the translation between what you're actually receiving and what you're actually able to transmit becomes far more fluent. So. I've noticed that at first when music, I didn't even think about it at, at first before I had these spiritual awakenings, but for me, it was just sort of like a compulsion. It was just like a reaction. I need to express myself musically. Right. But now I see very clearly that in order to convey some of these more multidimensional ideas that are, that are working cyclically and not linearly, mm -hmm. they have to be conveyed in a, a musical way or an artistic way. Yeah. And if I don't, if I don't play music for more than, you know, a, I mean, I would say for more than a day, if I'm not engaged in something musical, I literally f find it harder to operate within this dimension because I yeah. need to bring that through all the time. Yeah, and for yeah. me, and I'm sure you can relate to this, and I'm sure other starseed beings who are here can relate to this. There's so much that is coming through all the time, so oh, much yeah. data, so much information. <laughs> and and it's it's of the utmost importance to bring it through, not just for the sake of conveying a message, but bring it through yeah. for our own sanity, you know? And yeah. that's a huge thing. Yeah, that's a, well, it sounds almost like, but yeah, you're right. I, I also find it, it sounds pretty strong as a statement, um, but um i don't know if you will like lose your sanity but um what i noticed so i would love to hear your thoughts about this with mm. with the raising of the frequency of the planet um mm. i noticed that um uh, people that have a uh, creative drive in whatever way yeah um also get uh, we probably all get triggered more and more mm. easily because it's it seems like and correct me if you think of this mm -hmm. differently to me it seems like we're kind of being pushed to start following mm. our hearts now, like really. Oh my God. It's yeah. becoming oh, yeah. more urgent. So yes. I felt that urgency since I was a child. So I really understand your, your statement about otherwise losing your sanity, like needing it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Although the word need doesn't resonate with me very much. It's yeah, more like it's... I'm so passionate. I, 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 I don't mind moving a mountain to give that to myself. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And it's, then, it's, and then really it's, no, it's no effort at all to move the mountain because yeah. you already decided you deserve it. And I think this is yeah. the, the important thing um, that I, I definitely would like to share with other starseeds and people who feel mm. driven by creative um, inspiration. Mm. Go do it. Stop yeah. thinking. Because yeah. thinking about it, like how it should look or how it should yeah. sound, you, you can do that further forever. And yeah. it, it's not actually grounding it. Just start doing it. I mean, mm -hmm. I was like you, I'm, I'm still am completely obsessed with everything uh, creative that I love. And I also oh, yeah. guitar, singing, humming, skipping, mm -hmm. moving, like I'm moving, <laughs> I'm dancing my own dance. And yeah. I, I constantly give myself permission to change my mind every second of the oh, way. Yeah. Oh, you got to, you got and to. You don't want to pin yourself down because that's where you yeah. kill inspiration. Yeah. And you're right. It's not about uh, how you're gonna, um, or, or, or why you would do this. Like for the world, it doesn't mm. need to have uh, a goal attached to it. Like I'm gonna paint, no. but but the painting needs to be liked by everyone. No, don't care no. about no, that. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just make the painting for your own for your own good and laugh mm -hmm. when it doesn't work out. Is what I would say. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. It's so important to, to give yourself the, the freedom of, um, I don't even want to call it making a mistake, but, but mm -hmm. being experimental about it. 
yeah playful about it absolutely and and you'll start to realize at a certain point in the journey that it's always just for you it's always just yeah. because your soul is reaching out to you to express that love that's in your heart and it wants to be seen not always by the world but just to be seen by your very eyes yes and that's really important to understand i feel and that's that's actually when you can move about your day and you can begin to move in the direction of your excitement with that attitude that it is purely for you do everything that you do just because you deserve it then it actually becomes far easier to move into the direction of whatever you want to create in your life and it becomes far easier to share your your expression with other people and because you what took, I, you took mm -hmm. the pressure off Exactly. Yes, exactly. As, as long as you need other people to like it, mm -hmm. whatever you're doing, you're making it depend on them. The success of the entire endeavor is suddenly depending on other people. But that's not why mm -hmm. inspiration comes to you. It comes to right. you because it wants to flow through you. And I can speak exactly. from I can speak from experience, like you just did. Like when mm -hmm. I say, um, if I, if I stop doing that, if I do not give that to myself, that is. Well, yeah, it's it's not even half of what life could be. Yeah. It's like less. Yeah. It's like yeah. this. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It feels so it feels very limiting and very constricting and and when you are a big soul in a little body, you want you need to do <laughs> you need to do everything that you can or I should say it's highly advisable to do everything that you can to allow your being your higher self, your soul to manifest in this dimension by expressing yourself. I think there's an emphasis in our world that states that we are not allowed to express ourselves until it becomes the best, until yeah. it's the most refined, until it's the masterpiece. But when yeah. we get caught up on the masterpiece, what ends up happening is we're forgetting the one fundamental thing about creative expression, which is the fact that we express ourselves just to physicalize our higher being into this world yes. purely yes and yes. i noticed that if you have this understanding if you come at your journey with this understanding of why you're expressing yourself from this very pure place then refinement in in the mastery of your craft actually comes as a byproduct exactly. of that embodiment and understanding yeah and and then therefore you don't have to put nearly as much effort into it it comes far more effortlessly and yes. naturally yes because big masterpieces in music are only being written by doing improv exactly Ama amazing paintings are only being painted by making sketches first so yes. the little doodle that you're making while you're on the phone mm -hmm. that's love that that's yeah like just love it look at it and go like wow look at what i did with mm -hmm. a ballpoint and and i just love that i just did that like every tiny yeah. tiny little part of letting that flow through you um and it changes the whole the whole energy of being on the phone even i mean you're you're ground, yeah. <laughs> grounding stuff while you're having a phone call and you're multitasking yes. and it's awesome and yes. you are all these things at the same time all the time mm -hmm. you're a creative mm -hmm. being and and I just love that we have so many different people on this planet that all really carry their own unique freq frequency signature. So they all have something so beautiful. incredibly unique to share, whether it's mm. a recipe or a dance or a mm. funny walk, you know, <laughs> that makes other people laugh. Mm -hmm. it's, it's precious. And it's so it's so precious. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I love that. Mm. <laughs> And so, so my question, this is, this is, as I think this is going to be a good question. This is okay. coming up for me to ask you yeah. is because you are such a visual person, right? right? Has this then made when you're in a channeling state, has this actually made it easier to comprehend some of the more multidimensional images that have come to you? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I think so. So for instance, when I had a, an audio download, like I said yeah. before, uh, I would have visuals too. So I'm like inside a video clip, like you described, right. uh, I think before we made this mm -hmm. video, you said you had one of those, um, you, you had more of those holographic reality. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
um, experiences. So yes, absolutely. I would feel it too. It's tangible too. So it's it's the whole the whole thing. Only yeah. a lot more can happen because it's multidimensional. Yeah. So yeah. for a while I, I did a lot of chanting. I'm I'm really in love with uh, everybody unique tone. Uh, and yeah. if you if you use your voice and you find that place where you do toning together, how incredibly magic that is. Oh um, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and I did <laughs> I did chanting and mantra singing for a long time. I just love that. You can drag me into a kirtan anytime. <laughs> it's, so, <laughs> it's so beautiful. Um, and um, I had one of those downloads where I'm astral traveling and I'm in space. And, and in that particular instant, I was just, it was my body in space and basically mm -hmm. nothing around me except for a sound. And the sound would um, cross over my body mm. and wow. it would... In the cross section would like move over the over the legs and all the cells would just like start swarming everywhere and it showed me how i'm being kept together by my own signature frequency and if i let let that go in a sense by merging with the all that is frequency yeah. <laughs> i yeah. just dissolve and it was yeah. totally fine and i could see my body dissolve yeah. and it came closer and closer and then it was really close to my head and i wasn't freaking out and i was like I could hear that tone and I was so enjoying it. It was like I mm. heard voices just overlapping and causing mm -hmm. overtones and all of that was making me dissolve. And I'm like, wow, this is so beautiful. And then I woke up just before Amazing. you came here. And yeah. I, I woke up understanding this like full explanation of um, how we are all our own signature frequency. Absolutely. And that's a resonance. And yeah. That's what it what was being explained in audio and visuals. And I think it's the combination mm -hmm. that made it really strong in that moment. Yeah. Yeah. That's just I completely an agree. And <laughs> oh yeah, no, so beautiful. And and that's exactly why, um, particularly with my more recent videos that I've been making over the past few months, why I incorporate um so many visuals and I and my and my roommate, uh, some of you guys know him as Zylock. He's an awesome animator, and so he <laughs> he will incorporate all these visuals and I'll incorporate the audio. And so we right. make it, uh, as you were saying, a multidimensional interactive experience so yes. that you can absorb on all levels because some people absorb more auditorially. Is that a word? They're auditory so. learners. It is now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is, it is now. Um, some people, they're more auditory learners. Some people are more visual learners. They're more, um, they can understand through language more. So, so to, to, you know, the universe is always creating on all possible levels. So when I feel that when you can incorporate that into your art, you have such a deeper, um, such a more profound understanding of, yeah. of how creation actually functions. Yes. And it's really beautiful. Yes. Oh, and what I would maybe like to add mm -hmm. to the experience I had, because yeah. now, now you're saying yeah. this, and maybe some people think, well, how am I ever going to share such a profound mm. experience? Because yes, oh, and, huge! And, and huge. this is this is fun because I look at that like I had that experience, and right now, if you would ask me to make a picture of that, I would just make little circles. <laughs> I was thinking, like, how would I draw this? You know how there is abstract art. Yes, it's it's funny because I'm pretty uh, illustrative. I'm pretty um, like um, uh, following uh, <laughs> an image that that's. Going yeah. somewhere somehow but i can be fascinated by super serene abstract art and really feel into it and understand like the one dot and the one square and i can feel into it and love it like mark rothko i don't know if you know his art his name sounds familiar but i'm not entirely sure i'm familiar with it, his it's stuff just, it's just layers and layers of oil paint color and it's just so deep uh -huh. it's like you're you're sinking into an ocean it's so beautiful to look wow. at but it's just blue and red for instance and it's stunning. It, it, it moves me. It can make me cry. So yeah. it's like, wow, it's only color. Yeah. yeah, but it's so much more. So that's what I, I want to tell people that if they think they cannot possibly embrace a multidimensional experience down here mm -hmm. with the limited tools that we have. Yeah. There is no limitation. Don't tell yourself right. that. Or, or you can if you right. want to. But I would say mm -hmm. just play with it because there is always a way. And when you yes. feel when yes. you feel the drive to translate whatever you have in your heart, whatever kind of story it is, whether it's multidimensional or everything is actually in the end. <laughs> okay, uh, whether it's a love story or 
uh, a dream you had or mm -hmm. uh, uh, your perception of truth that you just want to to put on paper so you have another perception on it because that's yeah. what it gives you too when you yeah. create art you create yourself as the creator you become the creator yes. And, I love that. Yeah. And so you open up the path to conscious creating as well because mm. you are actually taking control. <laughs> yes. With your pen or your instrument or just your voice yeah. singing in the subway yeah. halls or mm -hmm. whatever. Because I believe when somebody starts singing out loud, just like here in the street in front of my house or wherever. I love when people whistle in the street or when they sing out loud. I'm like, mm -hmm. you're you just changed the entire frequency of this area. Yes, yeah, thank so you, beautiful. Thank you, thank you. Uh, and we're yeah. all so gifted in so many ways. I just love that, and I would mm -hmm. recommend mm -hmm. everybody to just let that flow through you because you have a gift. <laughs> oh, completely. Yeah. And you know the thing that you mentioned before about how how does one go about beginning to express truly all there is mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it actually from in my in my experience yeah it comes with it, it comes with the relaxing the need to express all there is because exactly. creation in of itself is infinite the moment that you create something is that's just the next thing in line that you use as a platform to jump off into higher degrees of expansion so wh where there's one creation there's always an infinite amount more because creation is infinite. Mm -hmm. And so what I've learned is that you're never going to create it all because you're always, once again, you're always going to see more that you have to create. So the way in which you really create something that is true to you is to relax into the idea that you're just doing the best you can every moment of every day and that mm -hmm. you should just have fun with it. And you should just play with creating what's in your heart with fully knowing that you're not gonna be able to create all there is because all there is is an ever expanding process. Just have fun with it and just play. And as you said, let it flow. You always want your energy to flow upward and outward. Yeah. And that's why that's why creative people and, and every, we're all creative people, but particularly artists and musicians, that's why we're always moving. That's why we're spontaneous. That's why we're unpredictable. Yeah. I'm like you. One moment, I change my mind all the time. One minute I'm here, one minute I'm across the country and there's no yeah. continuity at all. It's because I'm <laughs> going. It's because I'm flowing and the energy is just has to move. It has to yeah. physicalize. And, and, and it's when you be it, it's like we could talk about all this stuff, but the moment that you start doing it, you you will know exactly what we're talking about. It's yeah. just you step into this infinite flow that completely dictates every one of your actions yeah. and every one of your thoughts and your and well, dictates it's, it's, it, 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 it drives. It drives. It yeah. drives. So, and yeah, drives. I'm really saying the same thing. We just <laughs> use a different terminology and. Um, it's, stronger it's, <laughs> it's like, so yeah it dictates it yeah it's just it's like oh, there's no other that's, way <laughs> that's my that's my divine masculine way of presenting things i, I look it, yes. i look I, back at my videos and i go i say a lot of strong statements but to me <laughs> but, but to me that is that is the absolute truth of how i experience it it's Therefore, your passion that's how, and i hear it's your passion, passion in it yeah and it doesn't sound like there's no other option it's just yeah but but also it does because because yeah. <laughs> there's always this polarity like we talked about yes. before uh, we made this video and there's yeah. a funny polarity I th I see a funny one in you saying you can never create all there is but yeah. you are creating I bet all you there are. is <laughs> because you are all that is and therefore exactly. all that is is already being created through you all the time and it's yes. a juxtaposition and a paradox and and this is one of the reasons why I love everybody's unique frequency signature and why I love yeah. when somebody else is singing out loud in the street or doing making a recipe or making another video because they are okay so me perceiving that is also me creating that yes and that's why I don't have to do it all because they're helping me but I'm also doing it myself so okay yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean so there's yes. this constant um, both things are happening it's a it's the simultaneity of the oneness. When you step yes. into the oneness, you you see. I I always say this because I think it's a good way of of explaining it. In oneness, it's never this or that. It's no. always this and that. Am I creating this or am I observing it? Well, it's both simultaneously. Yes. yes. And it's cyclical. And yeah. and 
once you understand that, then the way in which your mind functions is in a very harmonious way because you're wor you're working with the way in which your heart understands and you and heart wisdom is cyclical. Yeah. It's nonlinear. And then and as we were talking about before we made this video, you start to be able your rational logical mind becomes determined by experiencing the paradox mm -hmm. so it's existing within that paradox where everything starts to make sense to the mind right exactly and mm -hmm. before you know it everything is a paradox and amazing. yes <laughs> <laughs> yes oh man oh we, we just filled up the time like crazy <laughs> okay well, great so um yeah wow i really love the sharing uh yes. Gabe, thank you so much for your time and thank you for everything that you're doing. Mm, um, thank you. So basically our bottom line message is really everybody go create and <laughs> don't, don't hold back and just do it because it's a gift one way or another. Mm. Uh, it's always a gift. It's always a gift. Oh, always. So thank you for being, thank you for watching. Um, yes, yes, ha happy you, creating and go creating. Yay. And if you're curious about Gabe's beautiful music work or about uh, the work I do and also Gabe and me, we both do channeling, uh, we'll put some links below so you can uh, look mm -hmm. that up. Um, yeah, and that's about it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you. We love you. Yes. So much love, everyone. <laughs> Yay. You all are amazing. Thank yes. you very much. You are. <laughs> Bye. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs>